Second race, let's get on to this maiden juvenile plate. It's over 1,200 metres. We're on the ball straight. We're back on the straight course. Haven't been on that course for a long time, so it's good to see us back on that wide straight. And uh, social media-wise, we've got Twitter, Waited to Win, um, in terms of YouTube, WhatsApp. It's all there for you. No reason why you can't watch so or get access to that information. Favourites got Jerusalem Moraine 15 to 10. When we did this on Wednesday, they adjusted the price. The horse, I think, I think it was 2 to 1. But they took out Johan Janssen von Furen's first time, who was second favourite. So that's now shortened as a result thereof. But um, very unlucky not to have won first time out, I thought, Daryl. Yeah, Clyde, going through the 400, I thought it was pay, pay, but it's all. Um, a little bit green, and then he came again. So I think uh, the extra 200 metres is certainly going to be in his favour. On that occasion, Hawkbill was fairly close up. He had the worst of the draws. What? Now, they drawn on opposite sides of the track, Clyde. So for that reason only, I'll put them both in. Um, what can I say? I hope to see Aldo de Mayer twerking in the winner's enclosure this time around. Because, Not uh, at the... <laughs> I saw that yesterday. <laughs> Having a go, I saw it. On those of you who didn't see it out at uh, Durbanville, he was um, uh, playing around it. But nothing wrong with that. Uh, tell me, the, the winner in that race, Daryl, mm. is very highly rated, I believe. From Roy, Is that Roy Magna? That's correct. So, tell like, me, top, top, top horse. The winner. Yeah, the form line hasn't lit up yet. But uh, I expect these two to do just that. So. Okay, let me ask Mr. Burrows, who are you on the race, sir? Uh, Clyde, I like Jerusalem Moraine, but I also like Hawk Bill. Now, Jerusalem Moraine cruised up to them at the 400, but he had a very high head carriage, and he was throwing his head up, and uh, the jockey had to just ride him quite strongly just to get that stride going, and he absolutely took off late. Now, Hawk Bill was drawn on the inside of him. He was also staying on eye-catching, so I'm not going to split them, but the draw is in favor of Jerusalem Moraine, I believe. So, six to beat five. It'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Uh, the bipods you got, Darren Burrows, that bipod that's on the screen at the moment, it's got a banker in there, and he's spending 320 rand on that particular bipod. And we've also got a Daryl Marie bipod as well that you guys can have a look at, take a see what the story is. There's Daryl Marie's bipod, and um, you'll notice there that he's also got a banker in his bipod, he's spending 180 rand. So it's going to certainly be a very interesting race, the opener, and that I mean between Jerusalem Moraine and Hawk Bull as to whom will get the better of whom in this particular case, with Aldo de Mayer now riding the favorite. 1,200 back up the straight. It's a juvenile class maiden juvenile plate. So for fillies in this race, there are a couple of first-timers. I'm not too sure what the story is with those, but I can tell you that Queen of Camelot, number nine on the card, is 18 to 10 favourite. The three, uh, Cara, uh, what's it called? Uh, Cala Muretta, second choice at nine to two. I think it was seven to one, so they've backed this horse. And 13, White Heels is 11 to two. Number five, Mix Bomb is six to one. Seven to one, about four great barrier and 10 to 1 and better about the others. Let's talk about the favourite Queen of Camelot. Tell us a bit more for those who didn't know anything about her. Uh, Clyde, on debut, ran third to Fire and Flames. We had Pure Predator second in the race, who was an impressive debut winner. This filly was making a debut and ran against two winners, not disgraced. Um, not the biggest of fillies, but I think she'll do well. The most eye-catching run out of that Guy Gibson form line has got to be Kella Moretta, who was switched off at the back of the field behind the likes of Jerusalem Moraine and them and absolutely sliced through the field late with not much gaps opening. I think this horse is the horse to beat. Um, Alder de Mayer for Ashley Fortune. I'm going three to beat nine. Okay. So from an odds perspective, you'd, you'd rather there's more value in the, in the second favourite? Is what you're yes. saying? Yeah. Yes. You, Mr. Marie, you agree with that? Seven to one they opened this filly. You've got to be joking. Seven to one they opened, yes. And she's now? Nine to two at the moment. Oh, why is she so big, Clyde? That's oh. a massive price. I Obviously, don't. they never saw the debut of this filly. Like Darren said, switched off at the back of the field. All the money was for the stable companion, Jerusalem Rain. Um, she's a filly, Clyde. She's back again. Well, she is now taking on Phillies and Mayor's company. And she's gained the extra 200 meters. Mm. Based on her debut, she's going to love the step up in trip. Um, 
the favorites far too short in the market i know it was a decent debut against winners but she was in receipts of five and a half kilograms that's a lot of weight um she's up the straight for the first time lucky's doing extremely well with his juveniles i just think the market's still wrong uh they'll start closer to joint favorites in my opinion especially if that form line is franked in race two if we see Jerusalem at yes. one, yeah. Interesting. Well, look, no, nothing taken away from Queen of... I think Fire and Flames is a very good horse and Pure Predator is a very good horse and Queen of Camelot was within a length of those horses. Yeah, she may have been receiving five kilos, but um, no question, she was in very good company. Having said that, the boys are on Carla Muretta. They saw something first time that you may not have seen and that's why they think it's going to start favourite. Let's have a look from a place accumulator perspective. Daryl's bankering Carla Muretta. Then he's going to be bankering later on in the next leg of his PA. He's bankering number two later on. And that happens to be uh, Broadlands. And he's got horses there after. It's a 450 Rand PA. Robin Clarkson's got favourite here. Godfather at 3 to 1. 33 to 10 about US Open at uh, second choice. And then you've got Broadway, number six, priced up at 33 to 10 as well. So Robin's got quite a strong hand in the race. I'll start with Daryl Marie. It is a pick six. will work from this particular event as to what you like. It's a maiden class field. So you're looking for some sort of, in, you know, you look for improvers in races like this. What do you think? Yeah, Clyde. Uh, Broadway last time contested a work rider event with the tongue tie. The tongue tie comes off. Penultimate start. National star won again. I think the second and third and the seventh have all won since then. Uh, then you uh, bowl. F What's a bowl first, Clyde? Three mm. runs back. He came out and I think he ran second in his post maiden uh, run in a handicap debut. So I think this is a weak lineup. But I do believe Broadway, without the tongue tie, brings the strongest form into this race. The improver has to be number nine over here. Uh, Knight's table. Now, last time out on the inside track, he got n he was never in contention. Uh, but I do believe he's going to make improvement now that he's been stepped up in trip. Um, and he's very likely raced. Uh, Harold the Duke blinkers off and comes back in distance. Disappointing. Clyde, this isn't... A strong lineup whatsoever. I've only got three horses in the bar pots in the PA. I just hope I survive. Yeah. Tough, tough race. Don't like the race at all. Mr. Burrows, what do you make of it? I thought there was to beat the US Open. Now, I returned after a bit of a break last time out and was beaten four lengths by American Biscuit. I just see a lot of improvement coming from him. Um, on that run, he had Williamson only half a length behind him. And Williamson hadn't shown much before that start. So the form lines are very suspect in this race. Godfather's got to go in. Uh, Broadway's had 19 starts in the maiden. Uh, Knight's table could be the only improver in the race, only having two starts. Mm, could be. Did we mention this was Rabobi? Which one? Rabobi, number what? 10. Uh, how would we like to mention it? Did we mention it by any chance? We didn't, eh? No. I like Rabobi. On Can what you believe grounds? it? Well, it ran to Ozan Ko, who won. It ran to Paul on Sugar on Miran second. It ran to Phantom of the Forest, who come out and won. No, you like the name, be honest. I, I'm, I don't. I don't. I'm telling you, I like Rabobi. Don't leave out Candace Dawson's horse. It's going to improve on the Ozan Ko run. But Daryl, Daryl's worked out his pick six, four, f I mean, five, six, nine. I'm not saying it can win, but I like Rabobi as an outsider. Anyway, banker two later on for Mr. Marie in the second leg of his pick six. Mentioned it previously that Broadlands is his banker and he's spending 1,125 Rand. So Broadlands does appear to be the right horse in the race, hard to beat. I'll come to Daryl first because he's made this his pick six banker of the day. It's in a maiden class field, so I may be surprised she's still a maiden. Sure. Costly maiden at that. Uh, uh, I'm not getting into this race overly bullish, Clyde, but if you look at her opposition, um, if she doesn't get it right today, uh, I'm done with her because this is a very, very moderate lineup. The biggest danger could be number four impersonation. Now that form line is ultra poor. I think four runners, four all unplaced. Uh, but they tried, they did try different tactics with her last time out. Maybe she can improve on that if she's allowed to, to stride this time around. But I don't think she brings the strongest uh form into this race. I, don't, I actually don't think you can, can compare her form with regards to Broadland's form. Mm. 
Rawlins form in her penultimate start. American Biscuit won from there. Quantifier came out and got beaten a short head second or, or second half a length or whatever. Yeah. I think the key over here, Clyde, have a look at her. She's got respiratory noises. That's broad lens. Mm. Coming back in trip is going to be prove the, to be the winning move. So back in a mile or coming back to a mile, uh, I think that will certainly favor her. So I'm going two from four, bank it two in all bets. Okay. Well, uh, she got close enough to the likes of CNN Enemy and uh, Palmer Zellis. Those are good runs. And she's not going to get an easy an opportunity to win, I don't think. Is she, Darren? Clyde, I banked this. Now, in her last four starts when she was a beaten favourite, I didn't like her on all of those occasions. This time around, I think she is a good thing. Uh, this field is very weak, and she's not going to get an easy opportunity. And the key here is the drop-in trip. I think that's a winning move. Okay. Remember, this is the Vol Mile Straight. They go up a straight here. Banker two for uh, Darren in Broadlands by Horses, Horses Field. It's a 400. 80 Rand jackpot from Darren Burrows aside. Daryl Marie, I don't think it's any different. He's also going to be bankering this horse. Broadlands to win by horses, horses, horses. He'll be spending 75 Rand a time. Everybody, let's get back into the uh, next race on the card. Absolute value tops the boards 1800 meter, uh, 2400 meters, but priced up 18 to 10. One flag bear is 9 to 2, and three prime example is 9 to 2. So there are a few in here with some sort of chance. Our Twitter account, Waiter to Win's YouTube, as well as our a WhatsApp number is all up there for you to please make a use of. You're welcome to join us at any given time. Going to Darren Burrows first to talk about the race. 18 to 10 absolute value over the 2400. It's been fairly consistent, this horse. Uh, yes, Clyde. I liked him last time out and he went to the front. They headed him and he came back to win. That day he had 51 and a half kilos, so he was allowed to dictate with the light weight, and he came back at them. This time, he's got 59 and a half kilos. And on that run, Flag Bearer was beaten five lengths by absolute value. He's now, let me see, six kilos better off at the weight, and he gets Pierre Stradham in the saddle. So one and two have to go in. Prime example has to go in as well. And then Lady Sansa and Pacific Express of the rest. Yeah. Flag bearer didn't run to form at all last time. I think it ran last. I don't know what happened there behind family favourite. What do you think went wrong there? Scottsville, yielding track. Maybe he didn't travel well. Yeah. He obviously took the race well because uh, he's back yeah. 11 days later. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if they're going to throw a spanner in the works of a year, Clyde, with regards to the pace because absolute value is clearly at his best when he's allowed to dictate up front. Mm. But flag bearer could possibly challenge... Uh, him for that uh, position early on, then then we don't know how the race is going to pan out. Even a, a fully like uh, Pacific Express, mm. I, I'm waiting for her to get into the race because um, she's better than her recent form. Prime example last time out, um, on Saturday in fact, mm. he was beaten seven lengths by Future Wolf, but he was too handy on that occasion. He'll run an improved race and La Lady Sands are quickened up well last time out. Based on that race, she's going to appreciate the step up in trip. So I don't think there's any value with regards to absolute value's current price. Yeah, okay. Well, I suppose top weight, not easy. So it's an open race. This, I don't need to uh, chase any more after information around this. I think we've worked it out. Let's put up what we want to do. Race number six. We've got a pick three worked out. Daryl's gone one, two, three, four, seven. Yeah, because it is that open by one, two, and eight, by one, five, eight, eleven, thirteen. It doesn't get any easier now, unfortunately. This pick, this pick three is 75 Rand. It's a middle stakes. It's over 1,000 metres. How are they betting here? Race number seven on Wednesday morning. Sheldon, 17 to 10. Siberian Steel is 28 to 10. Second favourite. Three Lucy English, 8 to 1. 8 to 1, about four. Here comes the rain. And uh, number six, Big Eyed Girl is 8 to 1. 10 to 1 and better about the others. I don't know. Not sure if um, which way to go in a race like this. I'll start with you, Darren. I kind of gave Here Comes the Rain a little bit of an outside chance. Do you give it any sort of chance here? A chance returning after a short break. So let's see how he goes. Uh, an interesting runner could be Godswood. Now that his ratings dropped, he's starting to find form again. And uh, I think he'll be competitive. The lightweight, Siberian Steel, 52 kilos to shoulder. He's on the up, should be there. 
and Sheldon. I mean, you can't ignore him on his consistent form. He's probably one of the leading lights in the race. Lucy English, I wouldn't ignore either. So one, two, three, four, six and eight, I've played the safe route. Yeah, there are quite a few in here. You know why I like Here Comes the Rain? It's been in the company of Rent to That Horse and Fields Rockets, right? In that sprint. Not beaten that far, only beaten two lengths. And just a length behind it was McCantor who came out at one. So he's been in very good company. I'll tell you something. If anybody deserves a victory to lift his spirits, it's Corey Lensley. He does, Shane, Corey. Yeah. He's lost quite a few horses recently. His mm. big boy's gone to stud. And he's a good trainer, Corey Lensley. Good guy. You know, so, uh, but let's see. What do you do? You give it a chance, though, or not? Uh, not in my top three. Okay. Uh, Siberian Steel Clyde. He has, I know he's not well in at the weights of here, but he has a horse that's improving with racing. Very likely raced. Last time out, he was never in doubt. He actually recorded a comfortable victory in his later start. Now he's having his peak run. I mm. can see him building on his current form. Uh, like Darren touched on, number two over here, Godswood. Uh, he's coming back to form. Penultimate start, he's two kilograms better off with Sheldon. And he had excuses on that occasion. Wouldn't be a shock to see him reverse that form with Sheldon. But Sheldon, you know, he's moving better nowadays, Clyde. So he, he's obviously in a good space and he's always been a, a good sprinter um and he's going on with it now so i wouldn't be shocked to see him go back to back um yeah so siberian still for me my number one pick respect for the one in the two okay quite a few in here this is the what we're going to do this event uh, in the race number seven we've got seven eight nine ten so we've still got four races to get through this is what it looks like we've got a jackpot the jackpot from darren burrows is one two three four six eight by field by field and darren burrows is bankering number one right at the back of the jackpot today the last jackpot it was called run for cover Race 8 over 1,400 metres. There are a number of horses in here that can win a race like this. The Mauritian tops the boards number 5 on Wednesday. Topped the boards, priced up 4 to 1, I think the, it was. It was uh, 1 Unconditional Love, 5 to 1. 11 Kian the Conqueror is 11 to 2. Kian is an Irish name, just by the way. It's not Sian. It's Kian the Conqueror. It's Irish. Johnny Dogs is 8 to 1 and 8 to 1 about Karapi. And then 10 to 1 and better about the others. Let me start with you, Daryl Marie. Is that from Tony? Who? Uh, Kian. Kian's Irish. It's a boy's name, a the popular Tony's... Irish name in Ireland. Most of the kids there's first names Who Kian. Who informed you? I Tony. know. Tony. I know my brother-in-law's Irish. Okay. I know. It's <laughs> Irish. Kian. Not Sian, as in Afrikaans son. It's Kian. How's that going to help us? doesn't Let's help at all, but I'd like to ask you okay. what we're going to do to win this race. What do we do here? Uh, yeah, you're going to take your chances and hopefully come up trumps because I'm not going to be of much assistance over here, Clark. Let's just stop, start with number 13, Admiralty Arch. He's very, very consistent. I think he was stretched at this Dan Sidetrack mile. Coming back in trip, uh, he'll, he'll finish closer this time around. A horse that you can never discount. Up the vol straight, Clyde, at a big price. What price is he? Number eight, Elusive Swan. Elusive Expect him swan. to be in the money. Certainly include him in your trifectas and quartets. 33 to 1, as Roy Boy would say. Yes. 33 to 1. Yeah, your, your guess is as good as mine, Clyde. I like a horse here, Daryl. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit. It's David Nevenazen's horse. Who's that? I'll give it a big chance. Stormy Winter. Hmm? Stormy Winter. Which one? I'm going to ask Darren Barrows first. Darren Barrows, what do you I like? Have... I'll tell you what I like in a minute. What do you like, Darren Barrows? I'll tell you with yeah. my horse. Clyde, I like a bit of Stormy Winter. He's a specialist at the Vol Straight. His rating in his last four starts, a 93 down to a 79. We could see him bounce back, even though he's a specialist over the mile, not the 1,400. Uh, Kian the Conqueror, back from 3 to 1 into even money last time out. Found nothing in the closing stages. I'm not sure what happened, but he's capable of better. You got the horse like the Mauritian. Last run was below par, but third in the secretariat behind the uh, behind Jimmy Don. That was a good effort. Um, there's plenty in with chances. The two top weights also have chances. Uh, very tricky. Yeah, you see, Darren Barrow's too good. Mm. Too good. 
1400 he's not 25 to 1 as well yeah 1400 i've got my doubts Clyde, let's just say that the pace certainly looks to be towards the outside unconditional love johnny dogs uh who else is there stormy winter big blue bright blue skies also got a lot of pace and let's do it so the pace appears to be towards the outside just watch Elusive Swan doing his best work late. Hopefully he can sneak into the money. Okay, we won't leave it out, but I'm still on to this horse stormy winter. Maybe too short, but that's 25 to 1 each way. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Darren. Yeah, we got a graphic for you. This is what the boys are doing. There's, um, how's that? There we go. We got uh, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, and 13. A lot of horses in there. And that's a 90 rand exacta. Maybe that exacta pays 400, 500 rand. Who knows? It's that difficult. It's not an easy race, guys. That's the way to play it. Last double of the day. I'm going straight to Darren Burrows. They've got the source Caliber Crest for Joey Soma at uh, 22 to 10. I thought the right horse in the race. Stable's deadly form. Yes, Clyde. Uh, he's one of a course and distance by six lengths, but he hasn't run in, what, 10 months? Um, that's concern. Um, I don't know how he's doing at home and if he's ready to win, but Tamanga has booked the ride. Um, he's had a lengthy layoff, so it's very difficult to assess. Um, Highborn Lady interests me because she loves the Vol straight. Um, she's been a bit off form, but last time I put a line through that effort over 1,800. Doesn't stay. Um, so Yoverman, first run for Tony Peter. This horse had ability in the Eastern Cape. His last two starts were on the poly, which he didn't enjoy. Expect this horse to improve again. Uh, of the rest, a horse like coming in hot has a chance. Okay. So fitness caliber crest concern? You it it has you to be. And you know what? Another concern for me is, Clyde, because uh, Joe has commented. He said, including all bets. There's no spice in that comment. There's no mm. salt. There's no pepper. But he, 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 he didn't there's, say needs the run. Yeah, but... Didn't say needs the run. No, nah, huh? Me, that's too bland for Joe. Oh, look too. for some manga Kamala. Oh, I'm not so sure. I mean, um, what's, with all yeah. with respect to the rest of the field, that none of them. I mean, they're staying at the Vol. These horses. Don't think for one minute they're going to end up at Kenilworth, and maybe going for the feature season. Any of what's behind <laughs> you, because they're not. With all due respect, they're lovely bread and butter horses. Horses you want to own that can earn you a check every day. Caliber Crest is the type of horse that can end up in a group type race. So. So, all right, fair enough. But the, you, you're looking to roll it over. Can I have some of whatever you want? <laughs> yeah, all right, you'll see. Yeah, it's a classified I'll stake. I'll remind so. you when he's in a group three. Clyde, have a look at the, I, I don't know if it's a filly or mare. No, is she a, she's she's a mare now. Harborn lady. Oh. Um, she loves a Wall Street. She loves racing fresh, Clyde. She's one little over here. She's going to bounce back to form. The horse I'm really keen on seeing going up the Wall Street is number three, Eagle Strike. Uh, he takes a lot of time to unwind, and I think a long straight will certainly suit him. Watch him, Clyde. He's going to be doing his best work later. I'm going to say each way number three, uh, five being my second pick. Yeah, that was an interesting run. Eagle Strike uh, was behind, what was that, the uh, Celtic Rumours run, eh? In there was a roll, red, red rollover, red rover, Vitellius. I don't know. Again, you know, nothing great to show time about. But there's a few in here with chances. If you don't like the favourite caliber crest, sounds like both our tipsters are not sure because of a fitness perspective. I suppose if Joey said it's ready and well, they probably changed their minds. Here's what it looks like from a betting perspective. Daryl saying take swingers and go one, three, five, seven, and twelve.